Hello everyone. Um, we are going to study thermodynamics now. Thermodynamics is an important chapter of physical chemistry. Few chapters in our course is very important in physical chemistry like atomic structure, thermodynamics, ionic equilibrium and electrochemistry. These four chapters are very interesting. They are very conceptual. Out of these four chapters, three chapters have very high weightage. And uh, as you can guess, uh, which one will be eliminated out of these four? Ionic equilibrium is a chapter that is uh, reasonably uh, conceptual, that has some mathematics into it. But if you look from examination point of view, these three chapters of physical chemistry, atomic structure, thermodynamics and electrochemistry, they have very high weightage and one of them we are going to study now, that is thermodynamics. Thermodynamics starts uh, with very fundamental definitions and this chapter prima facie seems to be deceptively simple. And we don't have to get deceived by the initial impression of this chapter because initially we'll be looking into certain basic definitions. But if we don't get into, if we don't um, have a good understanding of those definitions and later in the course, we will have to come back to these definitions again in order to understand things and then move ahead. So the best thing would be initially we'll be moving, when we'll be looking into definitions, we have to look at them really well so that we understand them in the initial stage and then we don't have to repent back, repent and then come back and to study them again. So initially the chapter will seem to be very s easy and simple. We'll be looking into certain definitions, but the toughness level will increase exponentially. When the definitions will be over, mathematics will start. And when mathematics will start, things will not be simple as it was before. So we have to tighten our belts. We have to study this chapter with lots of respect. And with the, uh, right from the beginning, we have to understand each and everything. So I'll, g I'll, I'll suggest you to, to look into all the definitions, no matter how simple they look, because they will be very important as the course will proceed and we'll, when we'll get into the middle of the chapter. So we'll start from now and uh, uh, let's see how well we can do in, in this. Okay, now let's start this chapter formally, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is coined from two terms, thermo and dynamics. Thermo, thermo means, thermo is coming from thermal, meaning heat. And dynamics means the study of motion. So thermodynamics as such is the study of heat in motion. And heat in motion is called heat transfer. So basically in this chapter we'll be studying heat transfer. We'll study uh, things apart from heat transfer as well, but the, the discussion will be revolving around heat transfer. So that's, that, that's why the term is thermodynamics. Now initially we have to look for certain basic definitions like system. System, system can be anything. The part of universe under our study is called system. It can be as small as an atom. It can be as large as a planet. Whatever we study, whatever we study, that that becomes our system. Whether it's a dead body, or um, it's a plant, or it's a software, or it's a pen, or it's a board, it's a duster, whatever. That that becomes our system. Uh, and uh, the part of universe, apart from system, that becomes surrounding. Uh, now the, the next definition is state. Now state uh, state is uh, state is a condition in which a system is kept, and state is defined by certain variables. They are called state variables. State variables are uh, those variables which which help us to give the state of a system, and. Uh, it depends upon the system, uh, uh, the, the number of state variables it require to completely specify its state. For example, suppose we have an ideal gas, then if I specify pressure, temperature, volume, and the mole of the gas, then the state will be completely defined. And you know exactly in which state the gas is kept. But suppose it's a real gas. Then apart from P, V, T and N, I also have to give you the value of small a and small b, those van der Waals constants. Suppose I have, a, I, have a, I have a table. If I have a table, then to specify the state of that table, I have to give the length of that table, the breadth of that table, the density, the color, everything. If I have a piece of iron, then I have to give the specific heat of that iron, I have to give the color of that iron, I have to give the density, the length, the breadth, everything. So it depends upon the system. 
the number of variables that is required to specify the state. In this chapter, basically, we'll be dealing with idle gas. So, uh, so all we have to do is we have to specify the pressure, volume, and temperature of the gas, and the state will be specified. When we change the state, suppose we change the temperature or pressure, or we change the pressure and volume, or we change the temperature and volume, or we change all three of them, temperature, volume, and pressure. When any of the state variable is changed, that means if a state variable is changed, then the state is changed. That means if state is changed from one state to another, then a process is set to occur. Then we move on to classify the system. We classify system as open system, closed system, and isolated system. Now system can, can show two kind of exchanges with the surrounding. Either it can exchange matter or it can exchange energy. Uh, and when the system exchange both, when it exchanges both energy and matter, that kind of system is called open system. A open system may be uh, water in a container. Uh, we, we, can, we can take the mass of water in and out. We can pour the water in or we can remove the water. We can heat it. It will accept the energy from the surrounding. So uh, a water kept in an open, open container is an example of open system. But suppose a water is kept in a closed container, then we can't pour in water or we cannot remove water from the container. That means the energy, that means the, the exchange of matter is not permissible. There will be no exchange of matter if the water is kept in a closed container. So closed container will be example of closed system. That means system permits only the exchange of energy. System does not permit the exchange of matter. When that is the case, that kind of system is called closed system. We have to get, get acquainted by, with these terms because these terms will be used over and over again as we proceed in the, in, in the chapter. So we must know what's an open system, what's a closed system. Then we have another kind of system that's isolated system and by the name it's very clear. The system is not going to exchange anything, neither matter nor energy. So that kind of systems are called closed systems. Now I give you some examples and you, you try to classify that, that system into one of these kinds. Suppose, um, uh, I, uh, suppose we talk about animals or for that matter human beings or plants, anything, any living thing. In which category should that lie? Should that be an open system, closed system or isolated system? Now any living object uh, will lie in the category of open system because uh, we, we, we take foods from the surrounding, we take, mat we, we take in the matter, when we excrete, we give out the matter. So we exchange matter from the surrounding and we exchange energy as well. We, when we take in food, we take that energy in the form of ATP. When we sweat, we give out heat into the surrounding. So uh, uh, we exchange energy and we exchange matter as well. So human beings will lie in the category of open system. Uh, can you think of any example of closed system? Closed system, as such, no system will be a, uh, 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 sorry, isolated system. As such, no system will be an isolated system because, because uh, whenever there's a difference in temperature of system and surrounding, immediately heat transfer will start. And obviously we'll have some exchange of energy whenever there'll be a temperature difference. So as such, no system is an isolated system, but, uh, but, uh, 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 we can approximate uh, those thermal container, those thermal container are made for keeping what, uh, keeping hot water or tea, whatever. If if that uh, if if it's a, a good company like Cello, then we can approximate it to be an isolated system. But uh, indeed, no system will be isolated system as such because there will always be heat transfer whenever we have temperature gradient. That means whenever we have a difference in temperature. So that's prima facie the classification of system. 